Hello everyone and welcome back for another video. This is Disrupt the 7 a channel dedicated to all things craps. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or an advanced player, all are welcome. I am 7 J, the creator of the channel, and today we'll be looking at something that is all too common to us. Trying to go all in in desperation to win it big. Putting all your eggs in one basket for one large pot. This strategy may have several names to it. In American football, it's the Hail Mary Pass. In poker, it's the I'm All In, the YOLO of all bets. In today's video, we'll be looking at what I call the kamikaze. Let me show you how it goes. All right, welcome to the breakdown where I take a moment to break down the strategy in play, the kamikaze. Some of you may know the name from a cocktail, a kamikaze shot, made of equal parts vodka, triple sec, lime juice, garnish with the lime. I'm not referring to the cocktail, although people do like calling strategy names per unusual things. I'm referring to the military tactic, the art of organizing and employing troops on or near the battlefield, an offensive operation of coordinated movements conducted to defeat, destroy, neutralize, or capture the enemy. In World War II, Japanese pilots made deliberate suicidal crashes onto enemy targets, usually onto ships. The planes were armed to the teeth, and once they ran out of ammo, knowing that the pilots had no means of returning back home, they directed their planes into a ship as their final strike to contribute towards a victorious win. In games and sports, there are other similar tactics. In American football, we call it a Hail Mary Pass. Those that don't follow American football, a Hail Mary pass is a very long forward pass. Typically, the quarterback in desperation throws a long pass in their final seconds of the game in hopes that one of their teammates can catch the ball to win the game. Otherwise, they lose. In poker, going all in, also an American term, that a player is in a bad spot, exhausted, worn out, and in desperation, bets all their money, their chips on a single hand, and that player can get back on top win it all, or go home empty-handed. But in craps, is there something similar? The answer? Of course. You are at a table, you're limited on time, you have a reservation of some sort, you have whatever change is left in your pocket from the night before, so you have a few minutes to spare for one final play. Go hard or go home, or you say YOLO, fudge it, let's do it. Whatever catchphrase you tell yourself to hype yourself up, you decide to bet it all on a power move. Put all your chips on the table for a feel bet or something on the horn. Whatever it is, you don't plan on staying long. High risk for high rewards. Then the moment of truth, the shooter throw the dice. And then you walked away with your head and hands dragging to the floor. You didn't win. You played the Hail Mary pass, but the stars and the moon weren't aligned for you that day. The kamikaze, played in many shapes and form, is a reckless style of play, almost suicidal, yet fun to watch. It's a very aggressive strategy, but when combined with the hit and run strategy, it can be a positive turning point. If you haven't seen any of the hit and run videos, I'll put out a link on top for you to look at. The kamikaze strategy is placing everything you have from your bankroll equally distributed and using the winnings from your bet to press every time. We want to utilize all our winnings to press as much as we can so everything goes back into the battlefield. Don't collect, you just press, press, and continue to press as if you're not planning to see that money. There's no room for error, there's no coming back from this. If you seven out, there's no second win, you lose, hence the name of strategy. We'll assume we're at a $10 table with a 3-4-5 odds. Our bankroll is $150. And we're telling the dealer $150 across, that's $25 on each number. For some people that may be too much from the $5 or $10 table minimum, others may be comfortable with that amount, but we're trying to win as much as we can in a short amount of time. We don't plan on being there too long. If you want to explore more using a lot more money than, let's say, $100 chips, then explore away, and you'll see how fast things can accelerate. We'll let another player shoot for the come out roll. We're not making a pass line bet. No, don't pass line bet. Once the shooter rolls and establish a point, let's say a 9, we'll tell the dealer to put $150 across. That's $25 on the 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10. I'll make another video of this, a part two, explaining should you place or buy the four and the ten. Some people may go either way, but I'll dive in more in another video. I'll leave that up to you, but in this video, we'll place the four and the ten for now. Nothing on the prop bets, no field bets, no come bets, just the main numbers. But we will incorporate the hit and run, three on, five off strategy, 
So if the first roll happens to be a five, then $25 on the five will give you 35. The dealer gives you $25 and two $5 chips. You use the $25 and tell the dealer to place it on the six or the eight. The six and eight are most likely outcome for the dice to roll. You decide. Let's say $25 on the eight. Second roll comes out and shoot a roll of the 10. That's $45 that you profit. Give the dealer a nickel to get back two $25 chips. Now you have two quarter chips to place two numbers on. The next possible outcome would be the six and then the five or the nine. Since the point is on the nine, so let's go with the five. The dealer puts our bets on the number and now we have $50 on the five, six, and eight. And we are barely on the second roll. The third roll comes around and rolls a six. Perfect. We have $50 on it. The dealer gives us $58. We continue to spread the winning on the four and on the 10. You can decide if you want to spread one on the come out number, but you get the idea. Combining the hit and run strategy, we are playing through the first three rolls and then turning them off on the fourth roll through the eighth roll. So off for the five rolls. If the shooter is on a hot streak, then we'll turn them back on for another three rolls, regardless of the roll. If they were a two, a 12, or a three, that's still considered a roll. If it didn't do anything for us, then repeat the three on, five off. The idea is to sneak through the seven by having our bets turned off and turn them back on when it's safe. It's not guaranteed, but the law of averages seems to agree. At some point, we'll start pressing to the point where our quarter chips becomes $100 chips. And we will aggressively go to two black chips and then to three black chips. And at what point do you stop if you were to reach this far? Well, that's a challenge. So let's go to the tables to find out. All right, we're at the battlefield. We are set to go with our bankroll set. My counters to keep track of rolls. The casino bank is in the center and the puckers off. We are starting with $150, all $25 chips. There is no room for error. We are playing aggressively. The point is off. Let's have another shooter shoot. Come out roll is nine. Pucker moves to the nine. Players place your bets. We'll take our money from the tray and tell the dealer $150 across. That's $25 on the 10, 25 on the 9, on the 8, on the 6, 5, and 4. We don't have anything left to buy the 4 or the 10, so we just place. Shoot for the throw. 6 2, 8 easy. Oops, dice flip. That was a 2. I'll keep track here. First roll count. Payout for the 8 is 29, 25, and a few ones. Take the 25 and tell the dealer to press the 6 or the 8. We'll go for the 6, $50. There is now $50 on the 6. Shooter is ready. Four two six EV already off to a good start. That's the second roll count. Payout for the six is fifty eight. That's two twenty five dollar chips, a five, and three dollars. We'll collect the loose change and use a fifty to press. What do we press? Tell a dealer to press a five and the eight. And we're good. Shooter again. Nine easy. Shooter got the point. Plus we have a bet on the nine. Payout is $35. 25 and two fives. We'll collect first. Pucker comes down. Let the shooter take another crack. Pucker is off for a new point. And the throw. Yo, 11. Nothing happens to us. We're just standing by. 5 EV for the come out roll. Puck moves to the 5. Shooter throws. 
5-3, 8 EV. Payout for the 8, $50. And some change. First roll count. We forgot to press our last bets. Ugh. That's fine, no harm there. Have the dealer change these for a quarter. So $100 to press on the four, nine, 10, and eight. That's $50 on the 10, $50 on the nine, 50 on the eight, and the same for the four. Okay, shooter's ready again. Five EV. Shooter gets a point. $50 on the five. Dealer owes us $70. 50. 60. 70. We collect. Reset the counters. Pucker comes down. Now off for a new point. Shooter tries again. Nine for the point. Pucker slides to the nine. Bets are not working. Let's remember to press now. We have to break change again. $25 there. Clean this up. Tell the dealer to press. Six, five, and the four. We now have $75 now on the six. 75 working on the five. And the same on the four. Reset the counters. Shooter is ready. One, one, snake eyes. Nothing happens to us. First roll count. Four and five. Nine for the point. Payout is $70. That's $50. 60. And 70. We'll collect these. Reset counters. Puck is off. And shooter tries her luck again. Yo, 11. Nothing happens. 10 for the come out. Slide the puck to the 10. We have two quarter chips in our bankroll. Let's do nine and 10. Break these $5 for another quarter chips. To the eight. We finally have $100 here. Dealer cleans this up for a black chip. $75 on the nine. And the same on the 10. Shooter is ready. Nine. First roll count. We have $75 on the nine. I'm checking the numbers, what the payout is. Dealer owes us 105. Let's get these in $25 chips. We need to spread these to the other numbers. To 
select the five and press everywhere else. To the nine, 10, six, and five. We have four quarters here. Let's clean this up a bit with the black chip. Same on the nine. Six gets a black chip too. And the five as well. All right. Shooter up to bat. Six easy. Second roll count. We have $100 on the six. Let me see what that payout is on that. $116. Again, get those on $25 chips. $15 and one. Collect the loose change and press on the quarter chips. Four, five, six, eight. There's $100 on the four. Clean that up with the black chip. Press the five. Press the six. The eight. Shooter again. Five. That was the third roll. We have $125 on the five. Checking to see what the payout is on that. $147. I hope, I hope that's right. Take $3 from here for an even 150. That was the third roll, so we finally tell the dealer to turn off our bets. But we said we wanted to make this quick, so instead we tell the dealer to take off our bets. We're cashing out. We'll end on a high note. Let's add up everything we have. Let's start off with the original bankroll of $150. Everything else is profit. Let's color up here. Break change here. And the same for the $5 quarter here and color up these two so let's add these up seven hundred dollars not bad I'm sure we probably made a bit more as I lowball the payout on one or two hits but that's fine we still managed to profit in this video we could have made more on the four than the ten if we did the buy but remember, we went all in on the first few rolls. We didn't have enough in the bankroll to buy the four and the 10. So we just placed bets them. In the next video, I'll break down what the numbers for the four and the 10 could add up if we were to buy. So I'll give it another crack at it and maybe we can aim to go a little bit higher, a thousand dollars in profit maybe. And a quick disclaimer, only gamble what you could afford to lose. Don't go chasing over your losses. This strategy may not be for everyone, but it is entertaining and I encourage everyone to experiment with it. We were able to cash out and leave with our heads held high. This was a fun one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, leave a comment. I am 7OutJ. Until next time, thank you for watching.